So time skip ahoy! So we're gonna pretend a little bit of time has passed. Because that's how things work in time bubbles and MMOs. Oh, that is so sweet of you. Good idea. I will be glad to keep this in my protection until it can be given to her. Okay. I have a gift from Round Rocks. Well, she thinks you should have it. It is a piece of what you are looking for, is it not? That's not the important part. But you, but you have read it. So if that's your plan, why not just go and, like, just show it to them, kind of bait it to them, and then run the hell away? Th this plan will only work if they have reason to suspect you have it. Maybe we gotta fix, uh, uh, uh fill in slow fix on what is going on. I mean, Rodrox is his daughter. Why don't we, why don't we bring her into the city proper? I mean, maybe she'll be afforded at least a little bit more protection there. And remember, the one rule in Idleshire is always protect friends. You think they're not going to kick the crap out of any Illuminati who, who try to come in and, and loot their city? Yeah. Alright, so, uh, Switch discovered something? I mean, we don't have the glowy stone inside whatever transmitter, encryption device, whatever the heck you want to call it anymore. So I don't think we, we can listen in and, and, and decrypt the Illuminati's messages any longer, so what? You're welcome, Roundrox. You are very welcome. Are you sure about that? Okay, where is Yastola? Well, maybe they're actually arming themselves with better explosives, so if we actually try to shoot them again, it actually will kill us along with them? Okay. 
Well, gee, I wonder if they actually managed to turn the core back on. We didn't do anything to dismantle it and prevent it from ever being turned on again. I somehow doubt that was a, 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 a one-way switch that once you turn it off, you can never turn it on again. Nice of you to finally make your presence known, Yashola. Well, it's a primal, and it's been sitting around here for qu uh, quite a bit of time in comparison to all the other primals. I think we need to find a permanent solution to this issue. Oh? Why don't you put on your goggles? W would that help you kind of discern things and figure them out? I mean, that is kind of what the goggles are for, right? Then why are you calling it the third if it's the first of its kind? I mean, I mean, it could be, could, you know, number one and two could have been prototypes, but that's that's not the point here. Uh, what what what? You can stop posing now. They can still talk to each other. I mean, most of them are hanging out together on the inside there. It's not like it's going to be total chaos. Yeah, the ones that are separated will, will be able to, if this thing works, prevent from com communicating long distance. But let's not forget about old-fashioned ways of communication and... Wedge, what the fuck? Uh, a little warning would have been nice if that's the, what it was supposed to do. Uh oh. I mislike the looks of this. I don't think this bodes well for any of us.
well, what was wrong with the way in we were having before? There hasn't been any word about them changing the code to get in or sealing it up or anything. Or that the path we took, there weren't, there were no other branching paths or anything the like. Yeah, that wasn't ever mentioned. Yeah, what were you discussing with Master Matoya the first time? You haven't exposited upon any of that knowledge that you supposedly may or may not have come across while you were gone the first time. What is your purpose here in the plot, Ishtola? And I mean that legitimately. What has she actually done so far? So, okay, we have another hand with which we can get in, but is, is the code to get in the same? Is the door potentially already open? What? So let's go check it out. Let's run right through the hot steam. Ah. Sorry, my guard's over. Sorry. Are you sure there's no Illuminati in sight? Are we sure this door is open? Okay, all right, all right, we're just gonna assume yes. All right, all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, everything is totally fine. Sh should we not go and, and talk to our friends, uh, Round Rocks, all them, maybe? No? Okay. So what awaits us in the other side? Or at least Alexander's other hand, arm. Looks a, a bit more of the same of what we experienced before. But I suppose that would make sense. You know, most people's hands are... Well, opposite of each other, but otherwise mostly identical. Well, that's different. Steam up my butt. Ow! I kinda hurt. Okay, Faust has had a bit of an upgrade. And what I find cool is, is you can actually kinda clip the camera into the floor here a little bit sometimes. And to think they actually put stuff down there, like they didn't have to make Uh, the great see-through. They could have just left it as a metal floor, so kind of a nice touch. Not really useful for anything, but but nice touch nonetheless. I can get by that. Run, 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 run. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think this is Floss's big brother, and I think we really made him mad. And he killed our medic. That, that does not bode well for us. get that kind of a spear though. Who built this thing? I, I still don't know where these giant robots have come from. Get 
still not the faintest idea. We now we're actually down on the lower level. So yeah, that's kind of why they had to put a little bit of detail on that, but they still could have just made it like a walled off basement that you couldn't see through. Oh, nice gobby butt. Uh oh, he's got a gun. And a pretty nice foot hook over there. I kind of want that hair now. Whee! So, yeah. Rat Finks Twinkle Dinks. Koji was probably laughing his ass off about this. So Rat Finks over here is, I guess, what you might call the, the mad scientist of the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty fucking big now. And interestingly enough, this is, granted you could blame it on the chemicals, maybe. But this is the first instance we kind of see of a glimpse of what is underneath those gobby suits. He's got like green like Hulk skin. Find that kind of intriguing. Like he's not even wearing shoes anymore. Like we can even see his toes. It doesn't last very long though and suddenly his clothes become repaired. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. Damn packet loss. So basically what we need to do is we need to use the, the Tesla coil in the middle to activate these little puddles which each do something different. Only two of them are actually active in normal mode. The other two are only active in Savage. Uh, the red one will actually turn you into a gorilla which lets you knock things away. The purple one, will, which we will see, will actually turn you into a burb. And we will need the power of flight for that. The blue one, by the way, will make you temporarily invisible. Which is needed to handle a certain mechanic in Savage. But it also works on the, uh, the ads in the fight, as well as Rat Fangs himself. So you have to be very careful about that. And the green one will actually cleanse a special kind of poison that, again, only exists in Savage. Now, this is what we need the birds for. This is how we avoid his little earthquake attack. Now you can obviously actually attack him while he is, you are the birds. Sorry, trying to concentrate for a moment because the tank didn't pop his cooldowns. But it's no, not really of much use. It's, it's just much more important to, to pay attention and make sure you, you're avoiding the earthquake stabs. It, the DPS is so little that you don't even need it. I don't even know who's tanking anymore. Got Medica 2s up everywhere. This is not kind of cool how this has ended up.
But anyway, uh, fun and adventures aside, now that everything's under control again and that I can feel like I can safely talk, it's been quite a while since I've done these fights, is even though they stick with like the normal, you know, square arena, I'm glad they take the environment around it and make you actually do something with it. I think it, it, it kind of makes a fight a bit more unique rather than having the boss himself have mechanics that the arena actually has mechanics itself. Now it's not like like the only fight where what's going on around you in the arena is important. But I like how they, they, they take advantage of it. been so long I've forgotten the rotation. Plus I did the savage version of this fight far more frequently than I did the actual normal mode. So there is also that. Turn into pretty little condors. Whee! Okay, that was fun. Back to normal. I kind of wish, though, he would he would take advantage. Uh, it's like even in Savage, um, he doesn't take advantage of, of the the portals himself. The only ones he takes advantage of is the blue one, and it's not even on purpose. It's only when you accidentally drag him into the blue one when it is active that you actually that he, it actually happens. Okay, size, I would really like you up right about now. But yeah, that, that's my one real disappointment is in Savage. I, I wish there was kind of a mechanic where he would purposely go invisible and you'd have to, to stall him out or, or something. That would have been interesting. Oh, it's good to see Round Rocks is all happy and singing again. So what kind of small complication? Yeah, where did she go anyway? She kind of just ditched us. Like, we, we gave her the piece of the codex to, to keep for Round Rocks. And to put a smile on her face, and that's the last time she saw. We saw her. Oh, if that bitch betrayed us, she's got another thing coming. Well, the thing looked to everybody else until Round Rocks held it that it was. Oh, look at the kitty! It was just an ordinary rock, so. Are they actually sure it is a piece of the Codex? Or is she trying to outsmart them? Hmm, something tells me something is not right about all this. Why would you tell us this? 
mean, again, it could be a double bluff, but... Oh, shut up, Wedge. But, but, I thought the missing piece was that piece of the codex. According to you, you now have it. I'm not 100% sure I believe you. Because why tell us this? Yeah, yeah. What Wedge said. Oh? That would seem to be the case. Well, maybe that wasn't really their intention. But it seems to correlate with what she's told us. I mean, she, she, by her own admission, she has read the Enigma Codex before, and it would add up. What? Hey, no, I don't, I don't see any pictures on that page. I see only text. Not mine. You made Round Rocks very upset. If you gave her favorite piece of junk over to the Illuminati, then I am about... I don't know what I'm about to do from you, but, it, but it's, it's not going to be good, okay? I haven't quite decided how much I'm going to torture your ass. Okay, all right. I'll keep a little bit of an open mind, but there is still a chance they are telling the truth and double bluffing us into thinking she hasn't betrayed us when in fact she has. I don't know, stuff like this is confusing, guys. We're, we're, we're dealing with gobbies. Oh, oh, I will gladly break stuff. Thank you, Biggs, for mentioning this. Thank you. Because I think probably the best, well, again, uh, I, I did mention that might end up being a problem where we don't know how Alexander is going to react and that it just might result in him absorbing more Aether from the land to repair himself, I suppose. But we should probably break something, at least to slow the Illuminati down. Maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good idea as any. I mean, we might as well try. You know, maybe we'll just break a, you know, like a small cog or something. We'll, we'll get some of those, uh, the aetherometer goggles and, and check it out to see what's happening. And then maybe break a little piece and, and see how much stuff we can break to either confirm or deny if Alexander is sucking more aether from the land to repair himself or it's actually, you know, the key to taking him down. We don't know. We don't know. I think it's worth a shot. I honestly think it's worth a shot. And I think we should take advantage of it. But... We have to follow the plot. Ugh. So, has our friend betrayed us? Well, friend, sort of. We never actually technically, technically befriended her. Um, ally, I guess is the better word to put it. Has she betrayed us? To the Illuminati? Or are they bluffing? So once again, we have obviously a parallel of what happens, well, what occurred on the other arm, which again does make a bit of a, uh, a bit of sense. But at the same time, I really wish that they have acknowledged if there was a slightly different route, or you know, maybe have us travel do something a little bit different instead of just copy pasting it. I mean, again, it makes kind of, it kind of makes sense they copy pasted it. But it doesn't make it any more unique or less boring to see the same thing again. I mean, it sure as hell stays on the budget, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, 
Down the poop chute we go. Well, that hurt. So do we have more Illuminati gobbies? Okay, robot. 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 Uh. Okay. Another robot. Okay, who is building these things? I do not understand. There, there's absolutely no explanation for how these things got in here. I do, however, kind of like these fights. It's, it's nice to have, you know, instead of one big boss or, or just giant trash mobs and whatever, that you have four little mini bosses that you need to defeat. I kind of like that. I'm, I'm not liking his, his twirly do of his, his poor man meant Edward Scissorhands hands. I I I guess they're uh they're they're spades I guess like like a garden spade. That's what they kind of look like. Okay, I I, I guess they're built by the gobbies then considering they call us Uplander. Okay. When the hell do I have time to build this? I don't know. So yeah, don't stand in the mines, guys. They, they, they very much hurt. At least they're actually visible on the floor looking at you, turn eight. Oh, love when people get hit by things. But yeah, Blaster does not mess around. He's like, I'm gonna make myself some holograms, and all the way, yeah, by the way, these holograms do more damage than I actually do. So how do you like that? Don't stand in the landmines, please. And y'all just stood in the fucking landmines. Good. Get that taken care of. I don't have stuff cast. What do you mean rear ring? This isn't the back. Like brawler because he makes the tanks actually do something and I know I should talk tanks a lot but let it be known that I actually do tank myself as well I just prefer healer I'm a bit more comfortable on it okay popping hell ground there was a little excessive but we'll be okay so his gimmick is he has various arm attachments and each one does something a little bit different And you basically have to pay attention to which one he is actually got equipped and respond accordingly. Now hopefully we'll see the third one because there is three. The single one is a tank buster. The drill one is based on proximity meaning you have to run the fuck away. Here we go. Here it is. Here's the double buster. This one you gotta suck the whole party with this crap. Boo! I like that.
And yeah, this is gonna hurt the tank. They're, they're, su they're supposed to tank swap there. Five stacks is, is a little too much. And crap, this tank might be dead if they don't know they have to turn around. Yep. This is the price I have to pay for having to do it in Duty Finder, guys, and not being able to find a dedicated party with which to do all this with and thus know all the mechanics. So I kind of have to wing it. Apologies. So, Swindler is kind of an asshole. So, Swindler is all about, pay well, not all, but a bit of about paying attention to the field. And you have the raised and lowered platforms, and you will get a certain debuff, and you need to do the opposite of what the debuff looks like. Otherwise, you will take heavy damage. And in Savage, it will probably outright kill you. And the reason he's an asshole is because you also get the Levitate deb uh, buff when you go to a higher platform, and it does take a tick for the game to actually recognize that you've either stepped onto or off of the race platform. And that can kind of fuck you over on occasion, especially if you're lagging a little bit. So you could technically be on an upper platform, but the game may not actually have calculated that you're there yet because of uh, server client differences. And you end up getting killed as a result. And it kind of sucks and it's why he's an asshole. So this is the other main- no, 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 somebody get in there, somebody get in there. That beautiful mechanic right there. You need to pay attention to the number of balls on his head. Well, over your head, actually, and that number of people need to get in. If you don't follow that number, you suck. So, Vortexer's gimmick has to do with elements, which I find kind of interesting. Although you don't really see much of uh, the use of it as much in normal, whereas Savage, it's much more important. Because it takes advantage of all of them, while normal mode just, ha just has them, but there's somewhat no distinction, like between this whole, the whole fire thing. Your placement is a bit more important in Savage. So the person who's got this water droplet is going to drop a little water spout vortex. And somebody who has the ice will need to freeze it. Very important you do so, otherwise you're all going to die. A horrible, horrible, horrible death. So this right here, Ultra Flash. He's pretty much going to nuke us to death. And if you're not hiding behind the ice block, y'all will die. Terrible way to go. Absolutely terrible. And you'll wipe everyone in the process too, so... Make sure you freeze that thing. Now, this Super Cyclone is really fucking annoying. But again, he's elemental based, so... It makes sense for him to have a wind. Okay, yeah, no one can play stupid with that now. Oh, 
I'm just gonna hide behind this thing right now. Thankfully, there's no mechanics he's got that will potentially destroy the ice block. Should you stand near it looking at you, Crystal Tower. Hooray! We did it, guys. So what about our companion? Has she betrayed us? Is she potentially trying to fool the Illuminati? Is the Illuminati trying to uh, fool us? I don't know. I don't know. I expected gobbies or her. I, I did not expect robots. Well, how about let's play stupid? Where is Round Rocks? Okay. You better start talking fast, man. Lady. Aha! 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 Okay, good on you. Surprised you smart people actually didn't pick up on the fact that she might have actually tricked them. I mean, I know you did say innocent until proven guilty, but... Again, this, this piece looks like an ordinary stone fragment, and without someone to... to kind of make it work and con and confirm it's that, well, if they can't do that, how are they to know the difference? Excuse me? Uh, d do you realize what you've done? Primal, hi. Huge consequences of this. If the world ends, I'm gonna pin this all on you. Does this man have a name? And please, pl no, 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 stop doing that. Stop doing that. Okay, uh, I, I guess I can give you half a point for trying to mitigate the damage. Well, seeing how that wound is uh, pretty fresh, I'm saying you kind of deserve to be smacked in the face by the broken shards. 
think you need a permanent reminder of the consequences of your actions. Yeah, I'm with you, Biggs. Really? Really? You put a, so many people's lives at danger because you want to see your boyfriend again? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I know love can make you blind and stupid at times, but yeah, hello, I, I, I'm missing quite a few friends and I did not sit there and start doing this weird, gruesome shit, putting other people in danger just for the chance to see them again. I'm not that dumb. Okay, guys, she should not have to explain this to you. She told you. Man she fell in love with was sucked into the core. Wants to walk to the ends of the world with him. It's pretty obvious who him is. We don't know his name, and I'm not sure why she's not telling us. So how did the Illuminati get the other code, the fragments of the Codex, anyway? Oh, okay. So what are we going to do? Are we going to command him to poof himself out of existence? Yep, that about sums it up. Frankly, Round Rocks is the only one around here who's not certifiably insane or questionable, so... Yeah. If we ask her nicely, yeah, can you please control this primal and pre No! But, oh! No, 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 this is not good. Not good, not good, not good. But, I, I, but I'm sure if we asked her nicely, she'd be like, you know, we could ask her... Hey, do you mind telling Alexander that he needs to, to, to go back into the Aether, please? And maybe Alexander would be, well, okay, you have the Codex, all right. Uh, no, sh no, 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 Biggs, no, that, that's not, okay, Biggs, back up, back up. Okay, I think what she's saying is true. The part that you should be believing is potentially a load of bollocks is the fact that said lover is actually still alive in there. We, we, we can call potential bullshit on that. But yeah, woman falls in love with man. Man gets sucked into primal. Girl awakens primal to be reunited with said lover. Okay? Yeah, I know she's fucking crazy for actually doing it, but... I have no reason to believe she's lying to me about this. It certainly makes sense of more sense of anything than anything anything anybody else has spewed out thus, thus far. Well, you said yourself they need two pieces. They need someone, they need a complete codex 
and someone capable of reading it. If they have someone capable of reading it, it's not going to do them any good if they don't have the full codex, which of which you still safely have the last piece. You going in there is just completely falling into their plans. My, no. No, please don't do this. I, I know you're worried about Rondrox. I know she's your friend. And I know she entrusted you with, with the myth the final piece of the codex because she wanted to make you happy. But but you're going to destroy all that if, if you let yourself get within a mile of the Illuminati for them to have a chance to take it. Please no. Please no. Please no. So can we save Rondrox from the clutches of the Illuminati? And will we keep Mide from potentially accidentally handing over the last piece of the fragment that they need. And yeah. Yeah. All the hell's about to break loose here, guys. Now, I actually very much, very much like this turn. Because for once, it's something different. I will be going over here. Okay. So here, at this point, the party splits up into two. So obviously, you want equally half the party to be on each side. Which is, it's just kind of, kind of interesting, I guess. But they also already did the kind of this thing in, in turn 11, anyhow. So it is a bit of a rehash, but I'm glad to see this is not the same as, as the third floor of Alexander. And I do have to say, I am a fan of these conveyor belts. Not so much the spiky floors, but wee! Now what I really love is remember Alexander is supposed to be a utopia. He, he, he's he's a living fortress, and here we actually see what appears to be a city. So I'm really actually fascinated that they incorporated that in here. Okay, took a while for me to load in there. Ready? More roller coasters! Whee! And then I'm on my feet just like a kitty cat. So, we're already fighting Quick Thinks All Thoughts. You would think he would be kind of the final boss, or, or you would at least wait to face him until the third tier. I mean, this isn't even the final fight in the second tier. This is this is very intriguing. But I also very much like this fight as well. I mean, the arena is kind of big, but it does go back and forth between these spiky floors and and this n n the not so spiky floor. But yeah, like, look at these spikes that are, like, covered in blood or something. Like, holy hell. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I suppose it could be rust, but... At the same time, like, ew. Like, I know I complained far earlier about the the colors. That they were very dull and dry, but th yeah, that, that's not what I was asking to fix that. It's kind of creeps me out.
No running from Tail Flyer, Gob Flyer X. Words are hard. Ready, fire, aim! So what he's gonna do is he's gonna trap somebody. He's like, you shall not escape me. And he's gonna throw them in jail. Yeah. So what we need to do, we need to break the lock. Let's throw some rocks at it. Now the person inside does not want to actually attack that because they have a pyretic debuff and will take heavy damage for doing so. Which is what happened there. But it'll be okay, it'll be okay. But I love how they, they keep with the, the gobby naming conventions in here. Of course, they would have to. So we actually have the cat involved in this fight now. And as you can see by the aggro list, the cat actually does have a name, even though she is never actually referred to as such. And yeah, they need to move her, move her. Well, the boss anyway, him. We need to kill this true heart because he will get a buff if he is allowed to eat it. Yes, that's right. The cat is blowing kisses to him, which I find utterly adorable. And where she goes, and yes it is a she, is completely random. Because you will run into situations where you do not have to worry about her at all and move the boss as a result. The other healer got the Medica 2 before I was planning to. We'll be okay. So the second prison is... Let me stun that, is a tank prison, and basically it's a DPS check for the tank, combined with their defensive cooldowns, to take care of the adds inside before they end up perishing from their frostbite debuff. And you would be surprised how many tanks actually fail at that. Even though it, it's partially more of a cooldown check than it's a DPS check, you can do it either way. So prism number three, yes I said prism, because it's funny. Not really, but let's just go with it. Is the healer prison. And for once the healer has to act as the meat shield. Because one of those four little portals inside is going to have poison spewing out of it. Yeah, like that. And the healer needs to stand on it and have the poison go up their butthole to protect the rest of the party. And it's just basically time. You have to wait for them to get out. So hey, easier to heal one, heal yourself than, than heal the whole party. So there's that. So I very much like how, how they take advantage of of multiple job classes and have their prisons do something a little bit different. Like there are other fights where certain mechanics only target certain job types. But I very much like how this one takes advantage of, of all three in particular. Nope, no size yet, okay. We're gonna see another kitty face? I don't know, maybe. But there's also, if you saw briefly before, pinballs, giant pinballs rolling around in the kitty phases, which you also have to dodge, making things a little bit more interesting. But it looks like we're not gonna see the kitty again. That's too bad. How 
how did we not break that enough to, to make it at least incapable of flying? I call hacks. I call ha- oh, oh, blew up anyway. Okay. Bye, quick thanks. I mean, I suppose you can call it him being a coward and, and running away when he's about to lose. Where is Round Rocks? Where is she? What have you done with her? Uh, yeah, no, okay, fine game. Let's just kick me out and not actually find out what happens to Round Rocks. Yes, yes, we need to rescue mission. Guys, right meow. Uh, but are we sure that's where Round Rocks is, though? How do we know we're not? She's not we're not keeping. They're not keeping her captive elsewhere. Surely they know we would come and go rescue her. Are they trying to throw us off their trail? Maybe. That would be very intelligent of them. I mean, not that it's not still worth going up further in the arm. That's a very good point. I mean, you did fool the Illuminati, but... You were kind of stupid enough to summon a Prival because you were so blindly in love. And only joined us because you wanted to see him again. But you did do it. Yeah, but that's still a very selfish reason. Yeah, it sucks when your dreams are shattered and lost. But you know what you do instead? It may take a little time. You pick up the pieces and you forge a new dream. Like, Round Rocks clearly has at least trusted you. She, she gave her, her you her most trusted treasure just to make you happy again. There's others that can make you happy too. You can make new friends. That's pretty much what this whole expansion is about. It, it's, it's just making friends with everyone and everything. Yes, I know there's been a void left in your heart by their loss, but you can fill it with something new all over again. You only need to try. You're clinging on to dreams of the past, dreams that weren't even yours to begin with.
But we never actually destroyed the first one. We just kind of hit a switch and turned it off. Maybe if we actually threw a hammer into it. Now, I think it'd be wise that we take the last piece of the Enigma Codex well out of their reach. Because taking it in there when they already have one of their missing pieces is kind of dumb. Shut up. J j just shut up. You completely undermined everything you just said by joining this expedition for selfish reasons. The only thing you want to do is just see your boyfriend again. That's it. And, and while I can kind of understand, and, and to some extent, we, we already had, had, had one raid scenario of somebody unable to cope with the loss of someone she loved. But you know what? She got the fuck over it. You need to as well. But I digress. I digress. We need to find Ron Rocks. Okay, poor girl is probably absolutely terrified. And she will be very unhappy if any pieces of, of her junk are missing. So we need to make sure that nobody takes any of that. And that all of it is here. So she'll be nice and happy when, when, it, when we get back from all this. Okay? You're okay. Well... At least back back Rex is at least willing to forgive long enough. On the grounds that well nobody has any fucking better idea what to do here, so Your weapons? Oh no. So yes, the robots are there. I, I just wish the game had made this much more explicitly clear. Like, obviously, I've known this entire time, but... It's one of those things where... I can't really comment on it if I know what's going on before the narrative actually tells me what is going on. materials for this are they like scrapping Alexander from the inside out so once again we have the awesome theme but I am a fan of I'm not sure if this actually happened in the fourth floor probably because we pulled right away but the lyrics actually don't start until you pull him which I find kind of interesting. Lethal force permitted. Okay, I wouldn't expect anything less. We are we are intruders after all. You don't want to just you know kick us around a little bit. You've messed with your plans a little too much. But too bad for you, I am the warrior of light. And I have faced far worse. So I I just thought of this now. Do they call it execution as in 
Well, the end result, if you don't kill these ads in time, is they will debuff you, but execution as in executing a program, or execution as in going to kill us? That's an interesting thought. I want you to dwell on that. Or maybe it means both. Eh? Eh? I, I don't know. I'm literally just pulling things out of my butt. I'm very fond of this fight. I like this fight. Very much. And eat your balls. There's a damn big laser. Wait, 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 wait. These guys again? Didn't I dismantle them? What the hey? How did you guys? What? Okay, well, now I guess the next robot we have to defeat, we might as well start making sure we remove the scrap metal. Otherwise, they might end up refurbishing and repairing them. Great, 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 great. Remember, robots are not made of aether. They won't dissipate into nothingness when you defeat them. Might be a good idea to learn that. Whoops. Well, I suppose we defeated them once before. We can now defeat them again. We know their secrets. Even though it would obviously be obviously very much confusing to the players if they did this, but it would be really funny if they, either as a joke or intentionally, just absolutely just completely mixed up the mechanics between the robots. Again, it would confuse the hell out of people, so I completely understand not going that route, but it, it would certainly make for a very interesting fight. And you can even you can even make jokes about it, how, you know, the gobbies mixed up the parts or something like that to refurbish them and got them mixed up, and maybe have another moment where Quick Thinks All Thoughts uh, punishes another gobby for messing up. That would be interesting. Okay, I'm out of the way of all of them. God, it's always giving me low instead of high every time. Not that it's not that terrible or anything, but. Anything cooler than one giant robot is several giant robots coming together to form an even bigger giant robot. So yes, this is brute justice. A very awesome fight. And you will have people be fighting being like, ha ha, brute justice? Oh, he's Bruticus from the Transformers. And then some people will be like, no, he's from Super Sentai slash Power Rangers. And other people will be like, no, it's Voltron. Guys, guys, just listen to the music. This is like 1980s. Just, just, just tropes all in one, okay? Don't fucking kid yourself. They're all based on the same concept of giant robots kicking ass. It, it, it's multiple things. It doesn't have to be just one. The fight is deliberately a throwback and made to be deliberately silly. Just go with it. Ok, 
Okay, these people with multiple vulnerability stacks certainly aren't helping. Guys, get in. Firing my laser! Now, best thing to do here, guys, just, just stay on the edges. Just, just stay on the edges for now. Don't drop shit in the middle. That's the dumbest thing you can do. Okay, see, now we can go in the middle. Or rather, stack on whatever tank has aggro on him. Who the hell has it? Okay, over here. Somewhat. And soak that, and then go back to the edges. See, now I have the low. Hooray! So yeah, I like how they, 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 they split up and combine the mechanics like that. Very nice touch. Okay, the healers are full on MP. We don't actually need maybe ballad. Okay, no, no, no. Tank, soak that. Soak that! Or at the very least, you should be popping Sheltron for that. It is physical. I have actually tanked this fight more than I have healed it. Now, we're cool. Everything under control. Hooray! We beat a giant robot! Again! But this one's made of five robots. Wait for it! Wait for it! Been more interesting there though if we act there was actually a unique animation victory pose but I do understand that would obviously be complicated and expensive to do just for a single flavor shot like this but yeah that is that is one of my favorite fights in the game right there and despite its its deliberate silliness I think it works because sometimes I can't take these goblins seriously, and it, and it does kind of hurt the narrative a little bit that, as a result of this, because Alexander is supposed to be this this huge threat of an aether-sucking primal, cannot be suffered to live around, but it's hard to take that seriously considering you don't see any of the effects around you of it. I mean, obviously I'm well aware that is obviously a gameplay issue rather than a story issue. But just, just these fights have just such a deliberate silliness to them. And, and while it's, it's kind of endearing and entertaining compared to the much more somber tone of the Binding Coil, again, it, it, it just makes it a bit difficult to take the threat nearly as serious. But, but there's three cores. Remember... This is only number two. This will stop them for a while, but... Okay, well now he has a name. Stop. Don't touch your scar. Just, just please don't touch the scar. You again! Didn't your little, uh, gob flyer blow up? Oh crap. 
Uh, Swift cast holy. Let's stun them and get the hell out of here. Teleport. Return. Something. Anybody? Anybody? Oh. I knew this was a bad idea. No, 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 stop looking at each other because you're gonna tell him exactly which one has it. Good thinking, Wedge. Good thinking. I mean, it's possible they very well already know. this fucking game with them. Of course, now they're definitely gonna believe one of us two left has it. God damn, we're so- Ugh. You idiots. I know you're trying to help, but, but Biggs, y you should've let Wedge just go with it and run. completely secured like sticking in your bra or something like don't just have it sitting in your pocket and easily be able to jostle you fucking idiots well good job breaking it well that was some terrible damn luck I know black cats are rumored to be unlucky, but... Maybe we just looked at it funny. Uh, guys, round rocks. Round rocks, guys. Hasten, let's go rescue her. They, they have the final piece now. There's no telling what they're going to do with her now. A absolutely no telling. Gu guys, guys, this is, this is serious. For real. That's what I said! Can I help? They are worse. They are worse. Wait, what? 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 What are you talking about? That totally happened!
What is going on? Are you okay? Okay, you don't say anything different. Okay, do you have any idea? Yeah, I, I think he's definitely going crazy. Did he get hit in the head, maybe? Suffer a brief moment of unconsciousness and thus his perception of time is a little warped? That's one hell of a gamble, though. is just coming into play now are you all seriously suggesting that alexander has power of time travel what the actual fuck yeah funny how him and yashola have uh, just kind of disappeared from the plot conveniently Did I say anything different? Well, it probably was just yesterday. Now, that dialogue box didn't really make it clear, uh, Backrix has been actually been keeping kind of a diary slash record of sorts of what's been happening in Aside Alexander and our adventures, so that's kind of cool. Hi, good to see you two. Yeah, how have your discussions with Master Matoya gone, by the way? Uh, what? Oh, we're going around to get a better view, okay. Oh my goodness, they're actually going to use the goggles. Ishola, why don't you use them yourself? What the f Okay, so I guess it probably didn't matter then that I should actually suggested, you know, destroying the cores, because if 
this is what is really happening. Well, they can just automatically reverse the damage. Well, we technically haven't lost already. What if we can still rescue Round Rocks and take away their ability to read the Enigma Codex and therefore control Alexander? If we can break the time loop. Wait, what? Okay, what are you spewing about now? What are you creepy little gobbies up to? What is that book you keep carrying around? But I thought you already knew the future. Y you, you should know if any of these gobbies are going to fail you. Okay, that's not how shapes work. It's like, ooh, look at that pretty lights. Pull the lever! I love how their, their, their metal boots are making clanking sounds against the floor. It's a nice touch. Round rocks. Hopefully she can find a way to resist them. Hopefully. Maybe something will happen to her, like what happened to Mide over here, that suddenly she will not be able to read the codex anymore and it will not respond to her. Of course, that would obviously very much compromise Round Rocks' safety, and they would probably dispose of her outright. Maybe? I don't know. Why are they 
any part of this story yet? Well, well, Sid actually has done something helpful, but Yastrola hasn't. What is her purpose? Surely you guys have figured out something with Master Matoya, even if it's not particularly directly helpful. Maybe maybe there's something you found out that's that's a theory worth looking into, or something worth testing, or something in particular we may want, we may, may want to look for as part of our research, and if it if things line up, okay, go back and study it further, so at least you know you're on the right track, or the wrong track of the case, maybe something, anything! Uh, it's a little late for apologies now. I, I still thank you for them nonetheless. But a little late. Well, how about we don't form a plan and we just YOLO it? Well, maybe that someone can be you. Yeah, c can we fill Slowfix in on what is happening? Sh she is his daughter, after all. Maybe? Anybody? No? Okay, fine then. Fine, 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 fine. 